Hi, and welcome to another episode of Crosspatching. Now today we're going to look at how to create a polyrhythmic sequencer. And we are going to save that as a macro so we can use it and play around with it. So the cornerstone of that will be this module from Frozen Wasteland, which is the Quad Algorithmic Rhythm module. Now that's a trigger sequencer with four beat outs. We are going to connect that to an OR module from Quelk. And what this does is basically this sums all of our beat outputs without overlapping them. So when there are two beats happening at the same time, it doesn't do that. So it only picks the individual ones. Then we need our pitch information. And I'm going to be choosing the ADDR because the great thing is, this is sort of, in my opinion, one of the best sequencers if you want to build your own sequencers because this is just eight steps but it comes with the ASX and if you connect that you can create 16 steps or or more you know as many as you want to but we'll stay with 16s for now I'm going to leave a little hole because we're going to fill that one later. But all of those beats are now going into the clock of our sequencer. So we have the rhythm part and we have the pitch part. Now, we need a master clock. Now I'm going to use the clocked, the small version. This time I'm not using the pulser because, trust me on this one, this is going to make very, very complex rhythms by itself without you needing to mess around with the pulser. Let's switch this off for now and go from the click one into the clock. Also from the reset, nope, not this one, from the reset here, and connect this one here. All right, we want this to be from a zero 10 because it's easier if you're processing that voltage. Now we want to also process our volt per octave information that is coming through and we are going to use our good old leakage voltage processor. This is a great module if you just want to shape and scale and offset all of the voltage that is coming out of the sequencer get you in here and honestly this is pretty much it now the only thing that I would do there's still two parts that I would recommend now since we're using it with this complex oscillator I want to have another source of CV coming out and I'm just going to use the random the random from Nischi and it is not always very easy to find there it is and have that be triggered by the complex trigger sequencer as well by the quad algorithmic rhythm sequencer now if we are looking of how we are patching this we have our gate coming out here and our CV coming out of here and a random source coming out here. Now this is kind of messy and it would be nicer if there would just be one side where there are all of our outputs so we can just look at it quickly. We don't really have to sort of scan the whole sequencer and luckily there is a module for that and it's called teleport. Actually it is two. So it is this one, the TP in, and this is the TP out. And what's important is that those two have the same code. And what I can, I can do now is I'm going to insert this one right here in the middle. 
let's leave this one here for now. And I'm going for my CV out from the pitch information into the first inlet, my gate information into the second, and then the random in the third. And as you can see, every socket that has an input is now lighting up on the other one. So this information is just being teleported from A to B. Now let's label them so we can just identify them more quickly. And I'm going to use a module from Submarine. And I'm going to be using, sometimes a little hard to find, yeah, here, the vertical text display. And this is our CV, that is our gate, and this is our random. There we go. This is our complex sequencer. Let's listen to it. We are going with our CV into our volt per octave. Let's reset that and reset that. Go from our gate to our envelope generator and to a random to our volt per octave. Let's randomize our pitch information. Reset this guy. And if we hit play now on the clock, it's not really that interesting because it is only playing those yellow boxes in a way. And what is interesting about this kind of sequencer is, is that the pitch information and the rhythm information are detached. So you might at some point get a loop, a sense of looping with the rhythm and the pitch, but they're never really in sync once you've established a more complex beat. So let's drive up a couple more of those beats, increase the steps in the second one, have some more so you can already see the offset. And let's hit and run. Let's offset this one. Let's make this a little faster. Drive some of them in. have it. Complex rhythm and enough outputs to drive your complex oscillator. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have more sequencer tutorials coming up and I'll see you in the next video.